Hi, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jenkins and I'm the adult services librarian at the Glenn McNary branch of the Greensboro Public Library. Tonight, we have a very special St. Patrick's Day program, an evening of Irish storytelling with Lona Bartlett. Lona is a former president of the North Carolina Storytelling Guild and has delighted audiences for 30 years. She combines traditional storytelling, music, puppetry, and her degrees in education to weave Celtic tales that delight, entertain, and inform. Thanks so much for joining us and enjoy. Michael was a fine musician, but he was an even better man. He always wanted to make sure that he was kind to everyone because you never know when you might just come in contact with a fairy. Oh, well, you do know, of course, that fairies can be as big as you or me and can look very much like a human. And you always want to be kind to a fairy. Michael always made sure that when he went to bed at night that he left a fire burning in his fireplace just in case there might be a fairy or two that needs to come in and just dance about and be warm. Michael lived in a small home that was outside of the town. But he would always carry his fiddle with him when he went in to play for a wedding or a party or a funeral. And this particular night, Michael was coming back from playing at a wedding. Oh, it was a lovely event. And everyone was up and dancing and everyone got tired, including Michael. As he was going back to his house, he was taking a shortcut, hoping that he might be able to get back to his home sooner because he needed some rest. Well, as it was, he got a little lost and he happened to come across the ruins of a castle. He found this very intriguing and he wasn't going to be able to get back to his house. So Michael lied down in the grass near the castle. As he fell asleep, he began to dream and he was dreaming that he was playing his fiddle at a wedding. But it wasn't a human wedding. It was a wedding for the fairies. And one of the musicians, the fiddle player of the fairies, knew of Michael and wanted him to do well in his work. And so he went to Michael, took him aside, and taught him all the ways and all the tricks and all the notes that the fairies knew how to play. When Michael woke up, that next morning, he realized that he remembered everything that he had been taught in his dream. <laughs> he turned to the castle and thanked the fairies, especially the fiddle player of the fairies. And he went on home. From then on, Michael was always playing at every wedding and every party and yes every funeral because his ability to play far surpassed the ability of anyone else. Michael was an excellent fiddle player but he was an even better man. Michael, the fairies, and the fiddle.
1821, Lady Jane Wilde was born and she had a yearning to collect folk tales from Ireland. The story that I'm going to tell you now is from her writings. An Irish wolf story. Connor was a man of fair means. He didn't have too much and he didn't have too little. What he had was just enough. Connor was a farmer and he had a small herd of cattle. He had about 40 head. He would go out in the late afternoon every day to check on his cows and make sure that all was well with them. On this particular day, when he went out to check on all of his cattle, when he looked about, he started counting. One, two, three, seven, ten. 15, 18, 20, 24, 29, 32, 36, 37, 38. Huh. Well, surely I miscounted. One, two, three, four, five, seven, ten, fourteen, twenty-two, twenty-seven, twenty-nine, thirty-two, thirty-five, thirty-eight. Connor was definitely missing two of his best cows. He went down to the barn and walked around there to see if they had gone down into that area and they had not. Then he went and he walked around the granary. They weren't in there either. So Connor did what any farmer would do. He went back to his house, got his walking stick and got a heavier coat. Connor walked up through the pasture and he walked into the woods and he walked and he walked. He was watching the ground as he did, hoping to see a track, but there was nothing there. So Connor just kept on walking. He's looking for signs of the cows, but there was nothing to be seen. He walked further and further into the woods. And then he realized that he had been walking a bit too long because the sun was going down but there was no moon in the sky that night. And when the sun finally went down, it was absolutely dark in the woods. He was sure that he was going to have to spend a cold night beside a tree. But after a few more steps, Ah, he saw a light. There was a light in a small house that was just on the other side of a fairly large heath. You know, a bunch of shrubs growing close to the ground. Connor was hopeful that he would be able to ask for a night of hospitality there, that he might sleep by their fire and rise and walk home the next morning. He took his walking stick and pushed his way through that heath, 
and he got to the door of this small house. Connor heard a of the doorknob and as it opened. There in the doorway stood an older man who had a long face. His grin was a sharp toothy one. And when he saw Connor, he smiled even bigger. Connor, hello. Finally, you have come. Please, please, we've been expecting you. Come into our home. Connor stood back a little surprised. Um, Sir, have we met? I am sorry, but I don't remember you. Oh, Connor. No. Well, you might not know me, but I certainly know you. Connor wasn't quite sure what to say or how to respond to what the man had said, so he went on and told him about his two cows missing. I'm wondering if I might have a night of hospitality. Um, perhaps I could sleep by your fire this evening. And in the morning, I walk back to my farm and keep on looking for my cows. Oh, Connor, yes, yes, by all means, we've been expecting you. Come on in, yes, and please, please, you'll sit and you'll have dinner with us. Connor could smell a stew that was cooking over the big fire in the fireplace that they had. It would make any person's stomach growl. Connor, keeping his walking stick close to him in case he needed it, responded, uh, yes, please, that, that would be wonderful, thank you. When he walked in the house, there was a large room, but it wasn't really big, but it was large enough. There were a couple of chairs, and then there was a rectangular table with two benches, one on either side for sitting. And beside that fire in the fireplace, there was a very old woman who was sitting on a chair and she was spinning wool. Her spinning wheel went whoosh, whoosh, whoosh around. She was most capable at turning that wool into thread. The strands went through her hands like sand going through the tiny, tiny neck so easily in an hourglass. And that spinning wheel kept spinning. Connor noticed the woman's hands and her fingernails. They were extended and curved and oh, so very dark. Connor looked maybe a little bit too long and the man interrupted his gaze. Uh, Connor, please come, come, sit. When my sons come home, then we will eat. The old woman took her hand and patted on one of the benches beside her to invite Connor to come and sit. He looked at the old woman and saw her attempting to smile, he thought. Her two teeth 
hanging down over her upper lip. Connor nodded and thought it best not to refuse her invitation. He went over and to sit on the bench. Connor, please give me your coat and your stick and I will put them over here for you and so you might be more comfortable. Oh, no, no, thank you so much, sir, but um, I, I am a bit chilled from walking out in the night air and, and my stick, well, it, it's very special to me and um, I, I can use it when I'm standing. I'm older now, you see. The old man <laughs> smiled and said, of course, Connor, yes, keep them with you. Connor didn't need it really to stand. He just wanted a reason to have it close at hand. He put a stick down near him and he turned and nodded at the old woman. The old woman kept spinning that wool and after a few moments there was a at the door. The old man went over and and in from the door came a very large black wolf. He was a gorgeous beast. Connor stood up very quickly and backed away, nearly knocking the bench over. He grabbed his stick, but the old man turned to Connor. Connor, Connor, it's okay. It's okay. Sit, please sit. You're safe here. You will not be harmed. You're safe. Please sit. Connor settled his stick down and then himself, but his heart, not so much. There was a small hallway that went off that bigger room and the wolf turned, looked at Connor, and then went on walking down that hallway. Connor could see that there were a couple of rooms on each side off from that hallway. And that wolf went down and walked into one of them. Connor sat there waiting as the old woman continued to spin her wool. And the old man was obviously waiting to open the door once again. And then it came. The old man walked over and click. And this time in came an even larger wolf. He was black as night could possibly be. In fact, he was so black, his fur shone almost blue. The wolf stopped and turned to Connor. <sighs> Connor held tight to his walking stick. But the wolf turned and walked down, down the hall and turned into the same room as the other wolf. The old man turned once again and looked at Connor. Sit, you're safe. No harm will come to you. You are safe here. Connor did his best to sit back. 
it only took a couple of moments for two young men to come out of that room. They were as handsome as Connor had ever seen before, and they were fit and strong young men. They were playfully hitting each other. And they walked over and sat on the bench across from Connor. One of those young men looked up and looked right at Connor. Connor, we are so glad that you're here. We've been waiting for you. It's been so long. We're so glad that you're here, finally. Uh, sir, have I made your acquaintance? I apologize. I, I'm, I don't remember. I, Connor, Connor, Connor. A story. One that you might remember. There was a day when you went walking in the woods. I go walking in the woods most days. Uh, is there a particular one? <laughs> yes, of course. On this day, when you went walking in the woods, you heard a whimper under a bush. Connor quickly got drawn into the story because he remembered this day. Yes, yes I did and I looked under there and there was a, a wolf pup. Oh, poor little thing. His, uh, his paw was all torn up. It was from a trap. It was bleeding. It was and you pulled out your water Yes, my pouch. I always have a water pouch with me. And you poured that water on the wounds of that pup. And you gently as you could, you cleaned out all of those cuts on both sides of that creature's paw. Yeah, I, uh, I was surprised. He was so wounded and hurt. I thought for sure he was going to nip at me, but uh, he didn't. Instead, the, the little one just let me pet him and, and pick him up and hold him. Yes. And you, after you cleaned out all of the debris as best you could, you took even more of your water and poured it to make sure that it was truly clean and washed out. And then, Connor, you ripped a piece of your own shirt off and you very carefully wrapped it around the paw of that little creature. Yeah, yes, I did. I, I still have that shirt. I was concerned because I had to wrap it tight enough to keep all those wounds tight together so it would stop bleeding, but it had to be loose enough so that as it healed, it would come off. And then Connor realized how wrapped up he had gotten in the story. Uh, but sir, tell me, how do you know that story? I had no companion on that day. I was there by myself. Yes, Connor, you were. You were. You wouldn't know unless you were there with me. But Connor, I was. 
you poured the rest of your water from your pouch and you gave it to me and you let me lick it from your hands. You picked me up and soothed me. You laid me back with a prayer and a hope that I would be safe. Connor, I, I am that wolf pup. Connor's eyes got big as the young man put his hand towards Connor and all of those scars were still on his hand under and on top. Connor looked astonished at the young man. Connor, you treated me with kindness where many others would have let me die. You instead helped me. You are most welcome here. Connor, you are safe. No harm will come to you in this place. And with that, the old woman stood up and she dished everyone out a big bowl of stew. And they were all passed around and they all sat and they all ate their stew together. When the meal was finished, the old man stood up. He went into one of those back rooms and he brought out a wool blanket. He put it on the, the floor in front of the fireplace and he said, Connor, for you, you will sleep warm tonight next to our fire. You are safe here. No harm will come to you. The family stood, went down the hall, and went into those two rooms in the back to sleep. Connor laid down on that soft wool blanket with his walking stick. You know, you can never be too sure about things. And he fell asleep quickly. In the morning, the sun had risen. And Connor could tell because he, he felt the warmth on his face. He stretched and realized that he was no longer in that small house. In fact, he wasn't in a house at all. He was in his hay field lying beside a haystack. Did I hit my head? Did I fall? Did I dream all of that? How did I get here? I don't know. He picked up his walking stick and realized that he had been sleeping on a soft wool blanket. He picked up the blanket and threw it over his shoulder and he went to go find his herd to check on his cows. When he got to his herd, he looked them all over and counted once again. One, two, three, 12, 14, 22, 28, 38, but those two do not belong to me. 
Connor figured that a neighbor's cows had gotten out and had come down into his herd. He would go later, knock on neighbor's doors and find out to whom they belonged. But then he turned and at his pasture gate, there was a large black wolf whose fur was so dark that it shone blue. The wolf nodded low. It was more of a bow. Connor looked at the wolf. He looked at those two cows. They were finer than any animals he had ever owned. Oh, they were majestic. He looked back at that black wolf. And Connor raised his hand in thank you and nodded. And with one more quick nod from that wolf, he turned and walked away. Connor was no longer a man of fair means. Those two cows truly were the most majestic of animals and the offspring from them made him an extremely wealthy man and it grew his herd. Connor would often go into town. He knew that wolves were being killed because they were attacking livestock. He'd see in the marketplaces the, the wolf's pelts that were lying on tables to be sold. And each time he walked by those tables, he did his best to be settled. His heart, not so much, for fear that among those pelts, he might find a black one. An Irish wolf story. Hi, my name is Lona Bartlett and I'm a storyteller from Charlotte, North Carolina. I want to thank the Durham County Library for giving me this opportunity to tell you a couple of stories from my Irish heritage in honor of St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> 